you guys. Welcome back to Writer Groupie. If this is your first time here, let me say thank you for stopping by. I hope you get a lot of enjoyment and maybe even a little entertainment out of this video. If you're a regular follower and you're checking in because the title of this video drew you, let me just say I hope I answer a lot of your questions. The main reason why I decided to do this video was because some people had asked me how did I write four books, four full manuscripts, 70,000 words plus, and publish three of them in 2021? And you know, guys, I got an answer for that, and it's coming up next on Writer Group. Well, to be honest, you guys, I don't know that this video is going to be something that can be done in one 15 or 20 minute segment. So it may turn into a series. I may have to do a series on how Kim wrote four books in one year. Uh, it's kind of important for writers to know how other writers are getting the job done because it could be systems that they could put in place also. And sometimes that's all we need is that bit of information, motivation, something to get us started, something to give us a starting place to get our work done. And that's what I hope to do for you today. And if you're one of those who likes planning videos, you're going to love this one. So let's get started. Okay, so I've been trying to think of how did I get started last year with my goals to write four books. What did I do first? And the Kanban board be behind me was the first thing that I did. I went and purchased a big whiteboard. I separated it with some washi tape to make six squares. And I bought a bunch of post-it notes. And I started making goals in the top of what I want to accomplish over a 90-day period. The middle section is what I'm working on currently, and the bottom section is what I've already done. As you can see already, the month of January has been busy, and I have done quite a lot of stuff. That was where I started. So if you haven't done a Kanban board, let me know. I'll be glad to point you in the direction of some great videos on how to get started with that. Also, if that doesn't sound like it might be your thing, don't worry about it. We're going to get into a few more places that might be more beneficial to you in time to come. The next thing I did was I began following some YouTubers who are planning uh, people who take journals and planners and they plot out their entire life. And this is why I started doing this because I thought it would be beneficial to me to know where I spend my time and to be able to plan ahead for what I want to accomplish in you know a week, a month, a 90 day period, even a year. So that's what I did was I went out and I bought all these planners. I'll go through them again. You might already have seen this. What I do with each one, this is my everyday planner. It's kind of like a journal. I journal here. This is my menu planner. I plan out what I'm gonna have to eat for the week. And this one is, <clears throat> this is my mood and habit tracker keep up with when I'm having a good week and why and when I'm having a bad week and why. This is a, my most recent planner. Uh, it's actually a journal. Some friends gave it to me for Christmas and I've been keeping up with my daily intentions in this. This is a memoir help. I am writing my memoir. My children have requested it. And this has some prompts. Every page has a prompt and you just write different stuff based on the prompt. And it kind of helps them understand how you grew up and, you know, kind of where you're coming from. This is my A5 binder. It's a beautiful blue this month. I do try and change it out every month. And I have a few little things inside that kind of inspire me. And I use Sarah Cannon's HB90 method, which you can go online and search for Sarah Cannon at sarahcannon.com. Or you can look up her Heart Breathings channel here on YouTube and you will be able to find <clears throat> the HB90 method and how you can use that to set goals and to achieve them in a 90 day period. And that, you guys, is my biggest, uh, the biggest benefit to me in 2021 was this HB90 method. It got me, 
motivated and help me to set goals. Now, I went from that to this. I just got my very first happy planner. I have never had a happy planner before. So, and I really wanted one because I've seen a lot of people buy them and use them. And these rings are very interesting because the way the ring system works is you can take out pages and put other pages in. It, and if you've ever heard the term Franken planner, I think this is where it came from. Uh, is you can take pages out, put pages in, and voila, you've got a whole different planner. And this one I bought uh, in the first part of January to keep me going uh, throughout the year. And I'm going to use it for a daily type of, weekly type of planner to keep up with household chores. And this is where I'm getting to because this is going to be your greatest savings for time. And the last thing is my wonderful gift that was given to me by Sarah Cannon herself. She gives a, has a giveaway every month, and I was very grateful to be the, <clears throat> the one who received it over the course of July. And I started using it in July of last year. And this is my content planner. This is the one that I put all of what I'm going to do for social media. I keep up with my stats. I have a quote of the month just to inspire me. And there's tons of pages that you can use to keep notes, to make lists, anything you want to in this planner. Fabulous planner by Erin Condren. If you haven't checked out Erin Condren, do go out there and see her planners. They're fabulous. You'll love them. Okay, so that's the planner lineup. That's how I got started getting my life organized and in shape. Next, I'm going to show you some helpful tips on what you can do for the same. Okay, so <clears throat> in order to stay organized, a writer needs a system. They need a plan. They need a routine. And if you're like me, and this may apply to older writers, senior writers, over 50 writers, if you're like me, you have a lot of stuff that demands your time every week. And the least of these is housework, or maybe I should say not the least of these. Sometimes you just have a lot of housework that needs to be done. Perhaps it's actual housework cleaning stuff, or perhaps it's just laundry, but whatever it is, you got stuff to do. And you wanna do it on a weekly, a daily, maybe just an a.m. and p.m. kind of time frame. That's what I'm doing. I have cut out some squares. And I'm gonna put them on here and I'm gonna notate whether it's an a.m., a p.m. or a weekly task. And let me put this where you can see it. There you go. Let me just write this in real quick. If it's an AM routine or a PM routine or a weekly task. Now, the way you can do this is if you know what you wanna do, if you know what you're gonna clean that day, just write it out, make yourself a little list and get you a A5 binder with, and get some, usually if you buy a binder, some things will come inside, like notebook pages and things like that you can use, that's what I did. And just make yourself a page for your cleaning routine. And then all you have to do is look at your list every day and you'll know, what have I got to do today? And you will be able to stay organized and efficient with your time. Now, as I fill this in for my own purposes, I think I'm going to use blue. A uh, blue, let's see, a blue and a green and a red. I think I'm going to use colors for each one of the squares. So we're going to start out with our AM routine. As I make this out, though, let me just tell you, that this is not an original idea. I got this idea from a channel on YouTube called The Organized Money. 
I saw her do this and I thought, man, that is exactly what every writer needs. They need a list of their routines and their, their tasks and their stuff that they've got to take care of every day. If you have a routine list, a task list of what you need to take care of every day and you can just look at it at a glance and get the job done, you have more time. That's just common knowledge. That's just common sense. So I do not have a fancy uh, video set up to be able to show you this. So you're just gonna get to watch me as I write and I'll just tell you what I'm saying. So one of my morning routines, and this would be in the mornings between seven and nine, would be to make my bed, to make a new pot of coffee for tomorrow, to put dishes away, especially if they're in the dishwasher or load the dishwasher, if they're not in there already and ready to be dis dispersed with. I, I also will pull up my emails and look at them and I will go through my planners and plan out my day. And when I check, pull up my emails, I also check my calendar to see if I have any appointments that I've forgotten about. That's funny because a uh, doctor's office has just called and left me a message and I think I might've missed an appointment. So anyway, those are some of the things that I do on a daily basis. And that's what you do for your AM routine. You just write down what you do in the morning. And I left a couple of spots in case something comes to me later. Do the same thing for your PM routine. In the afternoon, I go to the mailbox and collect the mail for me and for my neighbors sometimes. I will take my dog out and let her run around for a little while and I sit in the sun and I generally do promotions at that time. I also will check my planners for what's going on for that day, like video, critiques, and that kind of thing. I will also work on social media I generally post to social media or my blogs. And later in the day, I will pick up the house and cook. So there you go. There's that. Now, weekly chores weekly chores would be things like clean the microwave and the fridge throw out leftovers i mean you can only eat your leftovers so many times right also change the sheets on the bed also, water the plants and let's see, how about plan an outing because I try to do that. Plan an outing. Sometimes it's for me, sometimes it's for me and my husband. And then I left a couple of places when I think of something else, but this this in your planner, you guys, this is an at-a-glance look. You can look at it every day and see what kinds of things you might need to do for the day. And you can add it to your planner if you want another reminder. You can finish filling it out, put some more stuff on there that's more important to your needs. And, you know, specialize it, personalize it, make it more for you. But this is just kind of an idea of what you can do to help keep you organized. If you have organization skills and you've got it all taken care of, you don't have to worry about whether you're getting something done or not. Like maybe on the weekly, you should put grocery. In fact, let me just do that. 
go to the grocery store and make your purchases for the week. So there you have it. It was that simple. And this will really help you find more time in your day because once you've taken care of these things, I mean, it's like the lady on the organized money, her name is Elena. She said that it takes her about 30 minutes in the morning and keeping my colors together, 30 minutes in the evening. And she sets aside maybe two to four hours on the weekend. And there you have it. These are minutes that you're gonna use every day to take care of these kinds of things. And you won't have to worry about them anymore because you know it's on your list. And once you've done that in your 30 minute slot, guess what? Now you can write. That's what I do every day. I know exactly what I've got to do that day and I get it done. I know I hate to be one of those people who just keeps talking about catchphrases, but get her done. That is very important. If you want to get more time in your day for writing that book, you guys start making lists. Lists are critical. Well, I hope that's helped you. It's been fun chatting today. Y'all come back next week for another video. I think next week is probably going to be a tarot for writers. That's always fun. I look forward to chatting with you then. Bye.